Hey, welcome to IMB Focus Radio, man. Once again, we are here today, and just like any other time, we have another special guest today. We're going to be talking about music today, and we have a Christian artist, Lehman Bassey, a.k.a. he is the artist. We're going to be learning more about his career and also what he does, man. So first and foremost, Lehman, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate your time, man. So for the audience, man, kind of tell us, man, what got you to music? When did you start singing? And tell us the whole school. So, yeah, so I've been singing since I was a a kid. I was always in the choir. I, I mean, the church choir, the school choirs. Um, yeah, so growing up, I've always been into music. My mother always um, encouraged me to learn an instrument or and sing. I played the trumpet. Um, and that's pretty much my my childhood background in um in music you know i've always been um in in some type of choir and whatnot that's awesome when you came up with the name he is the artist i know there has to be a story behind that so when it came to your branding and how you wanted to market yourself in the music industry how did you come up with that name and what's the meaning behind it right so it actually means god is the artist um originally i was on my um, artist name is Lehman Bassey, which is my biological name. Um, and then um, at, when I became a Christian artist, I took on the name. He is the, uh, he is the artist to put God first, you know, in my um, artist name. I like that. And when you were into like music industry at first, were you always faith based or what was that like for you as far as developing your sound? No, I started as a secular artist. Um, so, and it was very like sexually driven um, music. I wasn't um, happy, you know, with after my first single um, with the direction of my music. So uh, luckily I, one day I heard a sermon from T.D. Jakes and um, it was a beautiful sermon about love and whatnot. And after that sermon, you know, I decided, you know, I really want to, make a difference in the world, you know, with my music instead of just, you know, having it um, be all about egotistical type things, you know. And let's touch on that because uh, when you had that first glance, like, all right, this is something I can do, but then you kind of pause and say, you know what, uh, maybe I can tweak it a little bit and go a different direction. Like, how was that uh, feeling like for you to say, you know what, let me uh, think this over again? I mean, it took a, it took a long time. It took um, prayer and just a lot of um, digging in my soul, you know, and really uh, just trying. I had to definitely see what I wanted to do with my life and how I wanted to um, go about the music industry, and just really, I had to talk with God, pretty much, you know. Um, I was always in the in the church, however, I was, however, I, I would consider myself a reborn Christian because um, after some time, I really had to look deep within myself as to why I was making certain choices. And, and also regarding my happiness, you know, uh, what really made me happy. And I really found that, you know, Preaching the word of God made me happy. Once again, listen, I refocus radio talking to our guest today, Lehman uh, Bassey, a.k.a. He is the artist. I want to uh, talk further about that because I, I feel like that's that's very interesting. When when you were growing up, did you have any like mentors or just people of influence in the music industry? Or did you just have a, a certain unique background as far as like the arts and your parents and how they kind of introduce you to, you know, new opportunities? Well, so I was always, uh, so my, my mother was my Sunday school teacher as a, um, when I was in, um, you know, like growing up. So she had a definitely, my mother definitely had a strong influence in, um, what what I was um, being taught, basically, religiously, um, as far as music goes, um, I definitely, um, I wouldn't say that I was always aspiring to be like a solo singer. I definitely was always um, 
I kind of went with the crowd a little, a little bit when I was growing up. And it wasn't until I got older um, that I really focused on really developing my craft and really being a, a soloist. So I would say I'm, I'm putting myself taught. I did um, take vocal lessons as a kid uh, because my mother was always into like the musical theater type um, type singing. And um, I, I consider myself a Broadway kid because my mother would always take me to uh, uh, summer camps that were um, Broadway based and musical theater camps. So you can also hear that in my singing a lot in, in many songs, you know, I'm, I'm very musical theater trained, but I also have a very much a pop and jazz edge to my, to my singing, you know, my mother always loved smooth jazz music. I would listen to it casually and that kind of was incorporated into my music as well. My brother was into rock music. Yeah, he, he had, he formed a rock band. He's about nine years older than me, but as a kid, I always, um, I would listen to that and that's incorporated in, into my music now as well. See, that's interesting because you have all these different elements that uh, definitely was an influence on, on you and had an impact on your creativity and how you chose to uh, navigate the industry. So when it comes to your music that you have released, I feel like what you're about to say brings back some of those memories and what you just shared moments ago with your family, how they had influence. So you kind of described to the audience uh, your most recent project. So my most recent project is will be out on November first. It was called Holly Jolly Two Point um, It's actually well, it, the original version was was a very jazz um, based version, but I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting with the, the with the rock uh, mixed to it. And it's really just about having fun during the holiday season, and really it mixes the different um, the different. Uh, genres that you know I grew up uh, listening to, and um, from jazz to rock to even country music, um, that's actually a very much um, my babysitter. You know, when I was a kid, she loved country music. Um, and I grew up upstate New York, where you know a lot of people love country music, and that's actually in my sound as well. You know, I have a, a very eclectic uh, background in terms of um, musical uh, musical ta musical taste, basically. Um, and that really is incorporated into my music as well. Yeah, let's talk about your impact and uh, purpose behind music, because we know now that it's your focus, uh, your focal point is to be faith based with your message. Mm -hmm. What do you hope uh, listeners will appreciate when they listen to your uh, upcoming project? Because that's tomorrow. That's that's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So yes. So that is a. Um, listeners will definitely will see a, a more fun side to uh, my music uh, tomorrow. You know, you know, praising God should be enjoyable. It should be it should be fun, and that's uh, coming up. Uh, I do have a more uh, a more heart wrenching uh, project coming up called Confessions of a Fallen Angel, which where which is debuts on um, Valentine's Day in two thousand twenty five. I mean that this is. Tomorrow's release is pretty much a um, an enjoyable kind of song before we get into the real serious, you know, really serious um, kind of um, messages. You know, uh, Confessions of a Fallen Angel is actually um, about addiction. It's about, and it could be um, drug addiction. It could be, you know, just addiction to bad behavior in general. Uh, and, and bad choices, it could also be. So that's actually a very, it's uh, it's about recovering from from such things, you know. And you can also look at it as uh, the fall of Lucifer, um, uh, you know, and just uh, redemption from sins, basically. When you look at the way you blend uh, Christian sounds with a little bit of R&B genre and a little bit of rock as well, is there any uh, particular genre that you that you like to study or just listen to to have some kind of inspiration or just be motivated when you're writing? Well, yeah. So as I've gotten older, uh, my sound has become a lot more mature than than when I first started. You know, I'm definitely um, had to listen to um, go back and revisit some of the great rock artists like Jimi Hendrix and. 
uh, Janis Joplin. I also had to listen to some of the great uh, jazz uh, singers as well, like uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, so many, there's just so many uh, different ones that you could um, could name for, for that. And I had to really study and really be serious about it. So it's a very, it's, uh, so my sound right now is is a, um, a very mature, uh, mature sound. Yeah. Well, once again, this is Refocus Radio talking to our, our guest today, uh, Lehman uh, Bassey, aka he is the artist. He got new music coming out tomorrow. How do you uh, measure as far as reflection when, once you release a, a project? What's some of the things you try to pay attention to? Or are you more worried about just getting the music out there as an artist? How do you look at that? So I'm very particular in, in what I like. I have a very distinct type of sound. I do like a much more of a, like a vinyl raw kind of sound, um, especially when, when we're, we're talking about like, you know, the mixture of uh, rock music, which is a very raw type of um, genre. And I mix it with jazz, which is kind of um, a more refined kind of sound. We think of like a, uh, uh, a vinyl recording basically where you kind of can where you kind of um have that real raw antique type of sound so i just i always stay true to myself however um i wouldn't say i'm super i'm like i'm super rigid about it because again like tomorrow's uh release is a very fun um, type of song where you, um, you know, a very feel good type of song, but I do have uh, standards in, in that respect that I do want to be true to the genres that I incorporate um, when it comes to the finished product, when it comes to the final pro product of the, of the release. And how's mom? Was she reacting to uh, all the music that you're doing and that you're releasing? And you obviously are on different media uh, media platforms now promoting your music. Was she uh, singing and, and saying to you as she watches you grow? Oh, she loves she loves it. She definitely does love it. Um, especially when I did a cover of Brown Skin. She somehow found it online. I don't. Generally speaking, I don't send my music to my mother, but she found one of my my recordings, and she, yeah, she was. I mean, this is like she she uh, was definitely a um def definitely a uh, good mentor for for me musically. I mean, she she is the one who introduced me to you know like a going to Broadway shows, listening to those vocalists there, listening to smooth jazz music, listening. And she would definitely introduce me to the arts heavily. I mean, she was the, the person who really um, put music, uh, well, exposed me to music, basically. A couple yeah. more questions I have for you is, one is when you look how you try to separate yourself as an artist from the masses, uh, I mean, we know the music industry can be cutthroat and also it's just a sea of artists out there. It's, it's a lot of uh, sounds in the market right now. So as an artist, how do you kind of separate yourself and just keep yourself focused on just your own unique creativity? You know, I always see myself as almost like an underdog. Uh, so I kind of don't have, I don't put pressure on myself to really, um, for numbers or anything of that nature. I really just do my own thing. You know, I'm doing this because I love, love God and I love, you know, and I want to preach a uh, positive message to people who are, you know, struggling with, with faith and whatnot. And that's a perfect segue because my last question was going to be, uh, let's talk a little bit about your personal faith, because obviously you were doing a certain type of music before, and then you said, you know, you want to change directions. I think mm -hmm. that's commendable for anybody to uh, take the time to, you know, make that happen for themselves. So for you personally, kind of explain to artists a little bit about your journey with your with your faith. So it's been, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> I mean, the world um, does 
can be very, very cruel and very hard, you know, especially in the music industry. And then um, just breaking, trying to break through um, the noise, basically, um, that's pretty toxic, you know, it can be pretty toxic, you know. However, through this journey, um, my faith in God has become stronger. I mean, you have to have faith to, um, you know, continue a, a positive um Basically, uh, the world, uh, the the music industry in general can make you very egotistical. I mean, it can make you um, not care about people around you and just want to just make money, you know. And through this journey, I've really hu um, been humbled and really immersed in the word of God, you know, that... You know, I'm making this music to help other people and not just to make money, you know, and making money is, is very important. We have to support ourselves. But I've been really humbled. Like God has really humbled me during this um, this journey and really has made me see what my purpose is in the music industry. And that is to help other people. For those listening right now and they want to get your project tomorrow, where can they find that? And also, if you're active on any social media, uh, mm -hmm. in particular, your favorite one or whatever, how uh, can they best uh, stay updated and follow you? They can find me on um, Instagram. He is the artist. They can find me on TikTok as well. Um, he is the artist. This is also my my uh, username there. And they can find my my project tomorrow on all major digital music outlets and um yeah and i just wanted to also say uh, as one of my final remarks is that you know god loves you and keep going um no matter what keep uh keep um your faith in god because um no matter how hard life gets always know that god loves you and he wants to to um, he wants you to win. Yeah. Once again, this is Ivory Focus Radio We're talking to our guest today, Lehman Bassey. You can get his music tomorrow. Like you said, just follow him on social media and find him on wherever you can get your music, man. Spotify, Apple Music, just go support. He is the artist. And for those who are ready and probably going to be anticipating for the new project coming out in February, 2025. What's the name of that project for 2025? Confessions of a Fallen Angel. Awesome. But once again, like always, I want to say to you, thank you for your time. And thank you. Thank you for having me.